In this video, we are going to learn how to use store procedures with Dapper. The idea is the following. Sometimes we may not want to hard code our SQL queries into our C Sharp applications. For that, we can use store procedures. With store procedures, we can have that SQL queries into a database object which we can modify whenever we want without having to recompile our application. So let's do that. Here I have a project in which I already have set up Dapper just like we learned in a previous video. Also we have a database which is the same database with the same people table and in it we have two records. Now I want to execute a simple store procedure for this first example. That store procedure is going to do a select to this same table. So let me go to the object explorer. Let's go to store procedures here and the one that I want to run is people select. So let me click on modify so that we can see the content of that store procedure. So here we have select everything from people. Really simple SQL query. Now here I have the same store procedure, the name of the store procedure and here we have a SQL connection initiated. So I can use it. I can say bar people equal to connection dot query and I want to project the result of the query into my person class. So I will say person, the person class is the class that we created in the previous video to project records from the people table into a C sharp class. So let me say here the name of my SR procedure which is people select comma and I can say command type column here command type store procedure semicolon here and that's it with this i am good to go I, I can press f5 and i can see that i have in people i have two records which are felipe and jessica which means that indeed we were able to run our store procedure and again the good thing about this is that i can modify my SQL query from here if I want, I can alter the procedure and without having to recompile my application, I can press F5 and as you can see, we have here that I only have one record, that I only got one record from the store procedure because I modified it to add a top one. Again, the good thing about this is to not have to recompile and redeploy your applications. So let me go back here because I want to put this back as it was, F5, and now let's continue. I want to make a second example in which we're going to have a store procedure that is going to receive a parameter. So let me say here with parameter and I will instantiate another connection. Let me put this here and also let me get the name of that store procedure. So it's going to be with parameter and let me get the name of the store procedure which is people select by name let me copy its name let me paste it here and let's get to work now i want to pass a parameter because this store procedure as its name implies people select by name receive a name and returns the people with that name so i want to see how i can pass parameters to a store procedure with dapper for that, we have to use the second parameter of the query function. Let's see that. Let me say people here equal to connection. We are still going to issue a query, so query, and we want to project that into person, and then with parameter, which is the name of my SR procedure, and in here, I can pass an anonymous type, an anonymous object, and with the properties of that anonymous object, I can pass parameters to my SR procedure. So we can say name equal to Felipe, for example, and then comma, and then I can say command type, let me say command type, command type dot store procedure, semicolon here. And that's it. With this, I am passing to the name parameter that I have here, the value Felipe. Let me see that. Let me put a breakpoint here and let me delete this breakpoint from here. Let me press F5 to run my application. And now if we hover over people, we are going to see that we have Felipe. And not only that, I can change this to Jessica, for example, which is the other person that we have in the database, in the people table. And as we can see, we have Jessica here. 
So indeed, we are being able to pass a parameter to our store procedure. Now let's make a third example in which we're going to execute an operation. We're not going to issue a query, but we are going to execute an operation, in this case, an insert. So as you can see, we have people insert here and we have a connection which is ready to go. Now in the insert store procedure, as we can see, what we have is a simple insert. We have insert into people and we have two values, name and email, which are the parameters of the store procedure. So we're going to be passing two parameters to this store procedure. So let's see how to do that. Let me say here, connection execute. I don't want to issue a query. I want to execute an operation. So let me say here, people insert, comma, and then new. And again, we're going to pass an anonymous object and every property of the anonymous object is going to be one parameter of the store procedure. I can say name. And for example, I can put here Scott, comma, and then email equal to Scott at hotmail.com, comma, which is for the third parameter of the execute function, we can pass the command type, which is going to be a store procedure, semicolon here. And that's actually it. With this, we are passing two parameters to our store procedure. So let me press Ctrl F5 to run our application. As you can see, it ran all the way till the end. Let me close this. And now I can see if the new record was added to the people table. Let me press F5 here. And as you can see, we indeed have a Scott here, which is great. Now, for the fourth example, we're going to execute this same operation several times. This people insert a sort procedure, we're going to run it several times. We're going to do that by passing several parameters, several different anonymous types to our execute function. Let's see that. Let me paste this here, which is the skeleton of our example. We only have the title and the connection, and now we're going to do some code. Let me say connection execute. Again, we're going to repeat the same people insert, but this time, instead of passing a single parameter, we're going to pass an array of parameters. And then for each object that I pass, we're going to run the store procedure as many times. For example, I will say here name equal to Robert and email equal to Robert at hotmail.com comma and then I am going to pass another anonymous object in which I can pass another set of parameters like name and email. So here I'm going to say Melissa and then email equal to Melissa at hotmail.com and then because I am passing two anonymous objects here, these two anonymous objects, this means that our people insert store procedure will be executed two times or twice. And then I'm going to say here, command type, command type, store procedure, semicolon here. And let's see that. Let me see that I can, let me comment this out just so that we don't have repeated scots in the database. Now let me press Ctrl F5 to run our application. It ran all the way till the end. Now I can go back to SQL Server Management Studio and I can press F5. And now we have Robert and Melissa, which means that indeed we were able to run the same store procedure twice. One for Robert and one for Melissa. Now finally, I want to make an example in which we're going to have output variables. With output variables, we can extract values that we set on those variables in the store procedure. Let's see that we're going to use a store procedure called people insert returns ID. Okay, so let's see what's that about. Let's go back here, people insert returns ID, modify. And as you can see, we have several parameters like name, email, but we also have ID and message. And those have the output keyword here, which means that from outside of the store procedure, we're going to be able to read whatever values we set into those variables. 
So the logic of this store procedure is the following. We want to make sure that two users doesn't have the same email in our people table. So for that, I wrote the following. I said, if exists, select ID from people where email equal to email. If there is already a people, a person, if there is already a person with that email, we're saying set message equal to the email X already exists in the database. Otherwise, else, we're going to do the insert and also we're going to try to return the ID that was generated by this operation by using the scope identity function. So I want to be able to read ID and message from my C Sharp application. So let's do that. Let me go back to Visual Studio and let me do the following. I will use something called dynamic parameters, which will allow me to identify parameters as output parameters. So we're going to say bar params equal to, and I shouldn't use params because that is a reserved keyword in C sharp. So let me say then parameters, that's better, new dynamic parameters. And then we're going to say parameters at name and the value of name is going to be Luis, semicolon here, parameters at email. And then we're going to say Luis at hotmail.com, semicolon here. And then for our output parameters, we're going to say parameters at ID, comma, DB type. I want to put the type in 32 direction this is what's important direction parameter direction and i want to say output semicolon here then parameters at message db type let me say db type db type a string so direction parameter direction output and size 200 i use size 200 because here we have n bar char 200. So let me put a semicolon here and that should be it for the parameters. Now let me execute the store procedure. So connection, execute, people, insert returns ID, parameters. And finally, let me say db command type should be command type only and then command type Extra procedure and semicolon here. Now I want to read the values of ID and message. Let's start with message. I want to say here bar message equal to parameters get a string and then message. Perfect. And what about ID? Well, ID is a number, right? It is an int, but we notice that sometimes it will be null and int cannot be null in C sharp. Therefore, what we're going to do is that we're going to say bar ID equal to parameters get object so that it can be either a number or null. Maybe we can use nullable here. I haven't tried it, so you can try that if you want. So let me put a semicolon here. And now let me put a breakpoint here. And then I can, let me comment this out. And then now, yes, I can run this F5 to run my application in debugging mode. And we have Jessica here, that's fine. Let me just remove that breakpoint F5. And now we are here. Now, there wasn't a Luis at hotmail.com email in our people table. Therefore, if we hover over ID, we will have the ID of Luis. And not only that, message is going to be null because we didn't have a message to return. Okay, that's fine. Let me press F5. And now let me press F5 one more time. And this time ID is going to be null because we didn't insert a new record in the people table. A message is also null because we made a mistake. Here we have message and message here. This should have been email. Let me put email here. Now let me press F5 to alter the sort procedure. F5, F5 to run again. And then message, right. Message is the email Luis already exists in the database. So as you can see, we were able to use store procedures with Dapper. The good thing about this is that you can update your store procedures 
and those changes will be available for your application without having to recompile and redeploy. Thank you.